It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Revising your policies and procedures. Having a code of conduct together with compliance policies and procedures is not enough. As articulated by former Assistant Attorney General Lanny Brewer, your compliance program is a living entity. It should be constantly evolving. The 2012 FCPA guidance stated, when assessing a compliance program, the DOJ and SEC will review whether the company guiding principles of enforcement has been taken has taken steps to make certain that the company code of conduct remains current and effective and whether the company has periodically reviewed and updated its code. Some of the questions you should consider are, when was the last time your policies and procedures were released or revised? Have there been changes to your company's internal controls since the last revision? Have there been changes to relevant laws relating to topic covered in your company's policies and procedures? Are any of the policies and procedures outdated? What is the budget to create and revise your policies and procedures? After considering these issues, you should benchmark your current policies and procedures against other companies in your industry. If you decide to move forward, I suggest a process which can be fully documented as a basis to include revisions to your compliance policies and procedures. So what are some of the things you can do? Well, get buy-in from senior leadership of your company. Your company's highest level must give the mandate for a revision to your compliance policies and procedures. It should be the CEO, the GC, or the CCO, or better yet, all three to mandate this effort. Whoever gives the mandate, this person should be consulted at every step of the policy and procedure revision process if it involves a change in the direction of key policies. Next, establish a core Policies and Procedures Revision Committee. You should have a cross-functional working group, which is ideally suited to head up your revised compliance policies and procedures. This group should include representatives from the following departments, legal, compliance, communications, HR. There should also be other functions which represent the company's domestic and international business units. And finally, there should be functions within the company represented such as finance, accounting, IT, marketing, and sales. From this large group, the topics can be assigned for initial drafting to functions based on their relevance or necessity. These different functions would also solicit feedback from their functional peers and deliver a final proposed draft to a drafting committee. It is important that you establish a timetable for the revision process and you hold representatives accountable for meeting those revisions. Next, conduct a thorough tech assessment. The cornerstone of the revision process is how companies capture collaborate and preserve all comments, notes, edits, decisions during an entire project. In addition to this use of technology and revising your compliance policies and procedures, you should determine if they will be available in hardcore online, that's hard copy, online or both. There must be a distribution plan, particularly if the code and compliance policies and procedures will only be available in hard copy. Next, determine translations and localizations. The 2012 guidance made clear that your compliance policies and procedures must be translated into local language for your non-English speaking workforce. The key is that your employees have the same understanding of the compliance policies no matter what the language. Next, develop a plan to communicate the revised policies and procedures. A rollout is always critical because it is important that the revised policies and procedures are communicated in a manner which encourages employees to review and use the policies and procedures on an ongoing basis. Your company should use the full panoply of tools available to it to publicize the revised compliance policies and procedures. This can include a multimedia approach or physically handing out copies to all employees at a designated time. You might consider having a company-wide compliance policy and procedures meeting where the new or revised documents are rolled out across the company on one day. But remember, with all things compliance, the three most important aspects are document, document, and of course, document again. However you deliver the new or revised policies and procedures, you must document that each employee has received it. Finally, stay on target and budget. 
You should work to set realistic expectations to stay on deadline and stay within your budget. This is equally applicable to policies and procedures revision. Also remember to keep a close watch on your budget so that you do not exceed it, particularly at this point in time. These points are a useful guide to not only thinking how to determine if your policies and procedures need updating, but also practical steps on how to perform or tackle the problem. If it has been more than five years since your last update, you should begin that process now. It is far better to review an update if appropriate than wait for mass than wait for a massive FCPA investigation to go through the process. So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, let me just start with that last point because I really want to re-emphasize it. If you have not revised your co- your compliance policies and procedures in the past five years, you should do so now. Think about it. Have you revised any of your business practices over the past five years? Has the law impacting you in any area changed? Not simply domestically in the United States, but any of the areas which you do business with or do business in internationally. Of course the laws have changed. Of course you have new businesses, new markets, new products, new services, new customers, new clients. Everything is dynamic in business. Your compliance policies and procedures must be dynamic to follow this very basic business into it going forward. Number two, set a timeline and a budget and stick to it in the compliance policy and procedure revision process. Make people accountable. If they promise to deliver something to you, make sure it's delivered. Check in on them. I think in this day and age of Zoom calls and perhaps more check-ins, we may get more used to doing that. But if you're back in an office working and listening to this podcast, uh, then you need to make sure that uh, people are doing what they say they're going to do. There must be sanctions if people don't deliver on time. And then finally, what's the Tom Fox mantra for all things compliance? Document, document, document your process of of revision to demonstrate more complete operational of your compliance program going forward as set out in the 2019 guides. I hope you will enjoy the entire month on written standards and that you will listen in again where we explore another topic in the month of May. If I could ask you to do so, would you pass on to at least one person this podcast series on the nuts and bolts of compliance as I'm trying to expand my audience base for 31 days to a more effective compliance program. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow where I take up another topic in innovation and compliance. Thanks again for listening. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.